Our new dream garden is finally coming together nicely for us. We've been battling some less than perfect soil conditions here at the start, but we're kind of working our way through that by adding plenty of compost and soil amendments to have that soil nice and workable so we can get in there and cultivate it, keep the weeds down, and have some nice tilth there so we get good seed germination. Our Irish potatoes were fairly slow to come up, but they finally did come up and we've got them healed up real tall and they're growing really good now, really happy with how they turned out. And then we've got our squash and our cucumbers that we planted. They're coming up now looking pretty good. We'll probably start thinning those out a little bit to about two foot spacing pretty soon. And our tomatoes, both the determinate and the indeterminate varieties have really started to take off in the last week or so. We've already been in there one time and pruned those bottom leaves and kind of healed some dirt around those stems to increase more root development. So those things are growing really good. We'll be putting some stakes in the ground soon for those. And our incredible sweet corn that we planted with the Hoss Garden Cedar a couple videos ago has emerged from the soil. We got a nice stand of yellow sweet corn there. We soaked that bed with the drip tape after planting and we got a little rain this past weekend which really helped get those seeds germinated and coming up out of the dirt. So that leaves us two plots in the dream garden that we haven't planted yet. So we've got four planted and we've got two more to plant. And in plot number five, we're putting winter squash. Winter squash is one of my favorite crops to grow in the vegetable garden for several different reasons. The first reason why I like it so much is just because it's easy to manage. It doesn't require a lot of weeding, doesn't require a lot of constant care. Once those plants get up and growing, they'll make a nice dense canopy over the entire plot there. We might have to weed it a little bit with the wheel hoe when those plants are small, but once that canopy forms, that's going to shade out all the weeds. We don't really have to worry about coming in there and cultivating the area. We don't really have to do a lot of weed pulling. It's just a nice crop that doesn't require a lot of hands-on management. Secondly, it's a one-time harvest crop. So unlike summer squash that we may have to harvest two or three times a week, these guys here we just harvest one time. So once those plants get older, they start to die back and those stems start to harden on those fruits. We just come in here and gather them all at one time and put them in our storage space. And the third reason why I like winter squash so much is because they store so well. So once we harvest all these guys, we can take them underneath the barn, put them on our storage rack, and they'll store up to six months sometimes. So we can enjoy the benefits of that harvest well into the winter. We don't have to worry about eating all of them at the same time or preserving all of them. We can just go out there, grab one when we want it, and they'll stay perfectly fine underneath that shed on that storage rack. So now let's talk about planting winter squash. Now, contrary to what the name might suggest, we don't plant these in the winter. We plant them in the spring and then most of them usually take anywhere from 90 to 100 days. So we harvest in the middle of summer, usually around July, and then they store into the winter. That's why we call them winter squash because they store so well on into the winter when we grow them in the warmer months. Now, as is the case with summer squash and cucumbers, winter squash, because they are a cucurbit, can be susceptible to plant diseases like powdery mildew and downy mildew. So one thing we can do to alleviate that disease pressure is to use drip irrigation. So drip irrigation is gonna allow us to water from the bottom. We're not putting a lot of excess moisture on those leaves. That excess leaf moisture is what really fuels those diseases. So by using drip irrigation, we can try to keep those diseases at a minimum by keeping the water at the roots of the plants and not watering over the top of the plants. So now let's talk about varieties row spacing and plant spacing. So I'm growing two varieties of winter squash in this plot right here. And as a side note, I should mention that any kind of pumpkins or winter squash, we always try to grow them in the spring. Now some people will plant them in the middle of summer for a fall harvest, but usually that time of year, our bug pressure is just so high, we just can't grow them. So if we wanna grow stuff like this, we have to grow it in the spring for a summer harvest before the disease and bug pressure gets really bad. But anyway, so I'm growing this one right here called Small Wonder Spaghetti Squash. And you might've seen a video we did last year on harvesting these guys. So this is a mini spaghetti squash variety. Most spaghetti squash are like the size of an NFL football. This is probably the size of like a mini football. So it's enough for two people. 
um, kind of a personal size spaghetti squash. And these things right here are extremely prolific. It's amazing how many fruits they produce per plant. You get anywhere from 10 to 15 fruits per plant. Last year, I planted one 60 foot row and harvested over 250 of these spaghetti squash here. So um, just have always been really pleased with the production on these and are super excited to grow them again. And the second variety of winter squash I'm growing is this variety of kabocha squash called Hai, H-A-I. And this is a variety that's exclusive to Hoss Tools. You won't find it anywhere else. And I haven't grown kabocha squash in a few years. We grew it in dad's garden several years ago and really, really liked it. I just haven't gotten around to growing it lately. But kabocha squash, if you never tried it, is probably the best tasting squash out there. It just has a really nice, sweet flavor, just absolutely delicious. And so we're trying this variety here, high, that has a green rind on it and then a nice meaty yellow inside. So in these subplots in my dream garden, which are 30 by 35 feet, I was able to get eight rows on a four foot row spacing. You can plant these guys on a five or six foot row spacing if you want to. I like to plant them on a four foot row spacing. That way I get that really dense canopy by that vegetation and it blocks out all those weeds and makes it really easy to manage. So we laid off eight rows and I'm basically just splitting the difference. One half of it or four rows is getting the small wonder spaghetti squash and the other half, the other four rows are getting the kabocha squash. So we made a furrow with our double wheel hoe and the plow set and we buried our drip tape in that furrow and then we planted on top of that buried drip tape. Now my soil was still a little wet from the rains over the weekend so I didn't turn the drip tape on and plant the seeds on top of every emitter this time. I just took my rake and punched a hole in the soil by every one foot there, put a seed down there and then covered it up with the rake. We're supposed to get some more rain here the next day or two. So I'll just let the rain water these guys and get them up. And then once they get up, I'll hook up the rest of the drip system and then use that to water it from there on out. I like to plant my seeds one foot apart, just as I do with squash or cucumbers, just to make sure I get a good stand. Both of these have really good germination rates, but just to ensure I get a good stand of squash, I'll plant them one foot apart, and then once they come up, I'll come in there and thin every other one and probably leave it at a two to maybe even three foot spacing. So save some room in your garden this year for some winter squash. Like I mentioned earlier, it's really easy to manage. It's only a one-time harvest, and then those fruits store for a long time so you can enjoy them long after you've harvested them all. Now winter squash, usually you plant that several weeks after you plant summer squash. It likes a little warmer soil to germinate, so we always wait into April, kind of a few weeks after we planted our summer squash to plant these guys. So you've still got plenty of time. So I'll put a link below to some of these varieties here or any of the tools you saw in this video and uh, get your winter squash planted and you'll have some really nice fruits to enjoy come this summer. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you next time. Thank you.